Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike King, and I am the director over the emergency communications efforts for Esri globally. We appreciate you taking time out to join us for what we think will be one of uh, one of the better uh, webinars that we've been able to put together over the last couple of years. I welcome my colleagues who are uh, calling in from all across the country and then to those of you uh, in the PSAP community, you're calling throughout the world. So, so welcome and, and thank you. Let's take a quick look at the agenda and we'll get right into things. Today, we're going to uh, focus our efforts on life-saving data feeds for the PSAP. And, and there are some really exciting things that are gonna be uh, shared with you today. We hope that they empower you and benefit you in your organizations. We'll first hear from Francis Kelly, who is our state and local partner lead at Esri. And, and Francis is just, you, you, you'll immediately uh, find how engaging he is as he visits with you. Following Francis, we're gonna transfer over to Peter uh, DeSalvo. And Pete is the co-founder and CEO at Data Capable, one of our uh, partners that has uh, got some exciting things today to, re to uh, release to you as well. Following Pete, we'll hear from Kevin Armstrong, one of our solution engineers in the public safety arena. And Kevin's going to be sharing how some of this information can be brought together uh, and how you can immediately take these feeds that we're going to talk about and start to incorporate those into your business functions within your PSAPs. Kevin will uh, transfer things back to Francis, who's going to provide some additional content and uh, give us some to-dos. And then uh, I'd, I'd like uh, my colleague, Britt Bromley, who manages all of our partners within the public safety environment to uh, wrap up the webinar. And Britt will uh, periodically throughout the webinar, uh, add some color and throw some questions in. So with that, let's turn the time over to Francis. And once again, thanks for joining us. Mike, thanks so much. We're really excited to share some, some cool things with the PSAP community today. And as we actually warmed up to this webinar and, and started the planning, we looked at this much like you would look at, a, at something like a cooking show, because today we're going to show you some really key ingredients that we would consider content uh, into a recipe and using the tools from ArcGIS kind of in the kitchen to really bring out some value in terms of what our partners do and what our platform can do to really provide awareness, situational awareness and response to things that are happening right now today or could be happening in the future. So with that, as Mike had mentioned, my name is Francis Kelly. I lead the partnering efforts for our state and local government sector here at Esri. And today, what I'm doing is I'm gonna channel my inner ways employee voice uh, and support our great partners uh, in this newly refreshed uh, Ways for Cities program. So many of you probably know Ways um, as a Connected Citizens program, and they're really expanding. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that on how they're evolving. Um, but we are really super excited to share how our partners content and the Esri technology can help you make better, more timely informed decisions in support of your community. And as many of you know, Waze helps muni municipalities around the world improve their mobility, access to transportation and sustainability efforts, as well as getting insights for their initiatives through the data sharing programs that Waze allows. So let's jump in here. And many of you probably on the call today are like, okay, Francis, we kind of know Waze because you know the app. And that's probably what your friends and family think of when you think of the Waze, uh, when you think of Waze just full stop. Um, it really makes sense. Waze is one of the world's leading mobility apps with 120 million monthly users across 185 countries. Uh, Waze helps people get where they're going quickly and easily. Um, and really that's about 25 billion kilometers per month where people are driving using that Waze app. But really let's take that beyond this navigation and directions. There's also a community behind here, a community of residents helping each other through the power of crowdsourced traffic and incident information. Really they're harnessing the most important uh, asset that you have out there and it's your community, your people who are reporting things back. Each month, half a million of the Waze users make getting around a bit easier for their neighbors by submitting about 60 million reports of real-time information into the app. A pothole or a car stopped on the shoulder or traffic, any of those things are just coming in. And remember, that's over 60 million reports um, really 
that are coming in real time. And really the heart of Waze is in this community, this collaboration idea and sharing. And Waze makes this information available to all of their users, and that's completely free of charge. So I think that's really exciting for all of us to, to learn about. But really as, as we talk about Waze as an app, we're really talking about the Waze you know today is actually gonna get bigger. Um, and really what we're gonna have is a mobility platform that helps people move freely in the communities where they live and work. Um, we give the users, Waze gives the users access to real-time information within the app. Waze is officially partners with over a thousand cities, towns, and nonprofit organizations to share that data. And that data is gonna come to you if you become part of their program. Uh, in fact, uh, Waze currently helps um, more than 60 crises, crises a year, things like hurricanes, and we're helping cities get safer through beacons, helping drivers stay connected even when they're out of range of GPS. And with our new, their newest initiative, Waze for Carpool, uh, they're helping combat rising congestion in cities around the world. Um, and as I go through the presentation, I'll speak about each of these programs in a little bit more uh, detail. But really, before we dive into that, let's talk about what makes Waze unique. Um, the team at Waze is thinking much bigger, and they, they aim to help address many of the challenges that communities are facing. Through the Waze platform, they're trying to bring together users, public sector organizations, private sector companies, and community members to solve the challenges of, of mobility at a global scale. Uh, and really, the, the reason for that is, is really Waze's really core mission. The folks that, that I work with at Waze are really passionate about what, what they do. And they, they simply say, we're all in this together. Waze believes that the best mobility solutions will come from technology that empowers people to work together, to act on that instinct to help one another and to make their communities even better, easier places to live, work, and get around in. And really the Waze app was founded on the concept that knowledge sharing is in fact power. And Waze is bringing that same philosophy to all their partnerships with cities and municipalities. And we really look forward to you folks uh, being a part of that community. So really in short, Waze wants to be your partner in mobility. The Waze team has been traveling around the world to help cities and municipalities tackle their most pressing mobility challenges. And it's interesting that despite the vast differences across the cities, the challenges they face are often really similar. And let's talk about some of those challenges and really they look at, we look at those as some of the goals. In, in my conversations with Waze, they have a deep understanding that many of our communities share these same goals. At a high level, they really include safety, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Making sure your residents and visitors feel safe by reducing traffic-related injuries or even deaths. Uh, we wanna always reduce congestion. There are simply too many cars on the road, making it difficult to get around a city, and creating traffic concerns, and we wanna make that, we wanna not look for perfect, but we wanna look for better. Um, we also want to hit those sustainability and climate goals, including reducing CO2 emissions from cars. So that's a big thing about the community feedback that we've heard. And finally, <clears throat> better access to mobility app options for everyone, regardless of where they live, so they can move about freely, affordably, and, and really safely. And as, as the folks at Waze had, had mentioned to me, their goals are your goals, and they want to share those with you. So really, we, we look at Waze for cities really helping fight these key challenges. Um, our partnership at Esri uh, with Waze has been around for a few years now, um, and we have a partnership with both Waze and Data Capable as many other content providers, and they are helping cities around the world address these challenges through technology and data, as well as through access to our user base in times of emergency. So we're really, we're helping uh, Waze with our partnership uh, tackle these challenges in three different ways. Uh, Waze is providing free real-time data to help cities plan projects and their mobility pro policy. We want to increase resident safety, that middle pillar, through real-time information sharing and an open source technology called Beacons. I'll talk a little bit about that. So they, they, with these Beacons, there's really no, no sense of a dead spot. And then finally, creating an affordable option for sustainable transportation, uh, namely this new Waze carpool. So that's just an aside from our conversation today. So Waze has a suite of four tools for use by our government partners. And again, these are all completely free for our community. So let's take a look at the Waze tools for cities. Uh, first are the four tools for government, take the best of Waze and they give it back to those cities. First, it's data sharing. 
Waze provides access to free real-time data about conditions in your city to help inform mobility strategies, plans, and initiatives. And you'll see that in our demo today. Carpooling is a big thing as we move into what's next for our communities. Uh, there's a new app that is live across the country already helping reduce congested and CO2 emissions. Uh, then Beacons, uh, an open source technology that they have released that improves driver safety in areas where GPS can't be found. And that's important. You don't want to have a dark zone when you're doing something for, uh, for your community and responding to events out there. And then finally, crisis communications. We want to always keep our citizens safe and also informed about shelters, road closures, and emergency procedures during large-scale disruption. So really, these tools for cities are absolutely free, and they're at your beck and call to make your planning. So let's take a closer look at each of these tools. First, we'll talk about the data. When we look at the data, it all starts with that powerful real-time community sourced information. All those people out there today known as Wazers are constantly updating what's going on in your city, in your street, on your highways. Waze gives public sector partners across, uh, or excuse me, access to all of their data through an API connection. And that connection is two-way, so you can message users on the platform as well. So that, that works uh, as a bi-directional connection there. The data sets uh, really provide a wealth of insight, including user-generated reports like traffic jams, hazards, or even missing signs, right? That's pr pretty important for asset management. So they could be addressed by your teams to inform future planning and routing. And then also we can provision or ways can provision email alerts for any unusual traffic events so you can react to those in real time. And that's really cool. I think that's a, a very exciting thing for the community today that this content is there for them. Um, and really that, that public sector partner can really be proactive about unusual traffic. For example, by letting the Waze community know about a street closure, right? So not only are you getting information as a Waze partner, but you can also give information like street closures that might be permanent or even temporary for an event. So that can be done ahead of time so traffic can be rerouted and people can be go on to their destination without doing the, you know, a slam to the face, if you will. Um, Waze can also push alerts to drivers in the case of a major event, a city marathon, for example, or any incident that might happen. So as you can imagine, it's a ton of data. Uh, so Waze can also help us manage that data as well. Um, so let's move on to carpooling in cities, because I think this is just a really brief thing that, that the community should know about. Um, this is uh, next for, for Waze. Um, every partner for Waze Carpool gets a complete suite of offerings from Waze so they can launch and encourage adoption. Uh, and this really helps identify routes and neighborhoods. There's turnkey marketing kits, and there's in-app messaging for Waze drivers in your community to encourage carpooling. Um, and there's always the, the data to track progress if you want to gamify. I know that's not the crux of why we're talking today, but as I'm channeling my inner ways uh, employee, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention carpooling and, and cities as part of their initiatives. Let's go to beacons. Beacons have become really important um, to the, the ways community. Um, and really when you think about the this third tool are these beacons, and this is an open source technology that improves driver safety. Um, as we all know, tunnels can be dead zones for GPS and navigation, leading to things like dangerous lane shifts, missed turns or exits, or even accidents, incidents that need attention. Uh, myself, as I travel through Boston, as you come right out of that airport, gosh, you can get, you can get lost in, and not routed correctly just through all the, the maze they have right out there at, at the big dig. Um, the beacons that uh, Waze provides enable uninterrupted location services underground, therefore really ensuring drivers never miss an internal exit and their seamless navigation to drivers or even an incident that might happen in a place where traditionally there isn't GPS, you can really have that incident get recorded and send someone out to, to respond to that in a timely fashion. Now remember, this, this technology is not way specific, it's open source, so that means all GPS providers can incorporate these beacons in their solution for free, uh, serving Wazers and non-Wazers uh, throughout. So that's a, a really cool, uh, a, a really cool opportunity. Um, it's really a simple so solution with a big impact. Impact Waze is already seeing over 18 cities, including New York, uh, Boston, where there are countless tunnels, uh, Pittsburgh, and also Paris. So it is a global program. Um, really. The last tool I want to take us through is this crisis communications. 
Um, Waze helps residents stay safe during a crisis through real-time communication directly within the platform. <clears throat> Excuse me, in times of crisis like a natural disaster, uh, Waze can help keep people safe by communicating road closures, detours, evacuation zones and in case of a flood, and emergency service locations and shelters for those in need. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Waze has more than 120 million users worldwide, so working with Waze can get much needed information out quickly and at a huge scale. So really, in, in, in an incident or a tragedy or a, uh, you know, a hurricane, you have access to the road closures and detour, detours, evacuation zones, and then emergency services, locations, and shelters, which are key during those huge uh, crises out there in, in, in your environments. So just a quick recap, as a partner of Waze, first and foremost, you get access to real-time data. You have access to real-time and historical data to help manage mobility and inform your future strategies, your infrastructure, your policies. You have access to a platform to communicate in time of need. You have open source technology to improve driver safety throughout your city and a turnkey carpooling program to meet your sustainability goals. So really to recap, <clears throat> Waze has really leaned forward with our community to say, we have the data, you have an appetite, let's make sure we have a great recipe and we can serve that up to your community. So again, Waze wants to be your partner in, in mobility and we'll talk about where you can begin and where you can go from here. Um, with that, uh, I'd really love to hand things over to my good friend, Peter, who's a co-founder of Data Capable. Uh, this partner of ours has been massive as, as far as their uh, adoption of our platform and providing real value uh, through these social feeds. So thank you very much for your time and I'll be back shortly. Yeah, thank you, Francis. Uh, like Francis said, my name is Pete DeSavo, co-founder, CEO of Data Capable. And first of all, I just want to thank everyone for joining today. I know everyone's got busy schedules and taking time out of your day, your busy day, tells me that you're truly passionate about saving lives, specifically with data feeds like all of us here on this call. So thanks for joining. I'd like to start with a statistic that's pretty staggering. In, in 2019, by the end of 2019, there'll be over 1.5 trillion photos shared on the internet. And really that's just reflective of more than just photos and videos. Everyone is sharing content today online. All diff different types of data feeds are available. And really that's what Data Cable is focusing on, harnessing this data and more in real time and turning it into actionable intelligence. This is an event, an active shooter event, that happens on August 31st. Unfortunately, in the US, these active shooter events happen pretty often. But I wanted to play this clip of the police dispatch audio just to get a sense of how chaotic it can be and really get our heads into the space of how important everything is we're talking about today. So I'm gonna play a short one minute video. Trooper down, shots fired. 131 westbound. He was shot in the gut, the left lower gut. The troopers are working on him right now. We have an after shooter on the interstate. There's another gunshot victim at 125 mile marker. He got one in the disc, shot wound to the head of this victim in his 18 wheeler. He is DOS. We're getting multiple calls for different victims at different locations. Headquarters, if you can. Get the chief to get on the radio on the news and get everybody to shut down business. Shut the night. We're trying to get everyone to go. What you think, Sandra? Five, nine. Everybody, shut sounds like. Go, 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 wait. Go. I'm in. 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 I'm
the event started at around 3.15 p.m. with a routine traffic stop. The driver started shooting at the police. The shooter continued for 30 minutes, and you can see on the map here kind of how he jumped around the city. At one point, the shooter abandoned his car and uh, hijacked a mail truck. So at that point, there were multiple reports of, or there were reports about multi, mul multiple active shooters, which actually wasn't even true. Uh, finally, over an hour later, the police shot the suspect in a parking lot. So you can see how much chaos and uncertainty there was. There were reports of the active shooter all over the place. So it was really difficult to track the whereabouts. The shooter started in a Toyota Camry, later hijacked a mail truck. So there were reports of multiple active shooters throughout the whole event. Multiple calls for different victims in different location, locations added to the confusion. And then there were officers talking on four different channels without clear information. So the question is, how can Data Capable help? And really, our software was built to globally monitor all these different data sources across the internet, anything we can really get our hands on, which includes Highway Patrol CAD, scanner listeners, social media, and much more. We filter out as much noise as we can using some patented machine learning algorithms, but still, that's not always enough. So we offer 24-7 human-in-the-loop validation and monitoring, <clears throat> monitoring and enrichment during the event. And then finally, we use Esri mapping technology to put this data on a map in real time. And specifically in this scenario in Odessa, we were providing notifications via text and email in real time. We were capturing some of these relevant pictures and videos. And we all know that pictures uh, are worth a thousand words. And we had human in the loop validation and contextualization. So throughout the event, we had people that were actually following and kind of removing some of that false information that was spinning around the internet. Like I said, we, we have some machine learning patented algorithms. This is a list, current snapshot of what we have today, but we're constantly expanding and improving and we're always looking for recommendations on what algorithms or what use cases or topics to focus on next. As far as integrations go, we're, we're an Esri business partner. So ArcGIS is a great way to go. <clears throat> if you already have Esri Maps, it'll integrate seamlessly and quickly in minutes. If you don't, we also have a standard REST API. Some of you might already have text to 911. So the, our text message alerts might be a good place to start as you build up your Esri architecture or system. We've also got email alerts, and if you have no tools in place, we have our own UI that's standalone. Here's a list of uh, our current clients or some of our clients. And really they, they range from utilities to Homeland Security to Turnpike authorities, but everyone believes in the cause and is using our software currently today. And like I said, we're, we're a passionate team interested in saving lives at the end of the day and really making a difference. Our, our vision is to be a global leader in predictive and real-time event detection and eliminating communication gaps. We're San Diego-based, founded in 2013. We've been growing year over year. And we're a Esri business partner, and we actually won an award this year at the Esri Partner Conference out of 2,500 Esri partners. So, so that was pretty exciting for us. And real quickly, we have a polling question to get some feedback from you guys. And Brent, if you could pull it up. Yeah, okay. There, so yeah, so everybody, hopefully you see this right now. We have a quick poll question here. And the question is, how likely are you to empower telecommunicators with real-time threat detection? And uh, please select one of the following. It is already, are you doing that today? Um, which is, I, am, am, I already am. Uh, this quarter, uh, next year, someday, but I might have more questions or never. So we'll give you a few uh, seconds here to respond to this. And then once we collect some response here, then I'll uh, kind of uh, comment on the results of this poll question. Thanks, Brent. Bet. All right, so the results are in. So thank you everybody for uh, responding to this. So. Uh, 
I, it was overwhelmingly uh, the first response or the most popular response was someday, but I have some questions. So I guess that's great. It means that people are really thinking about this, um, but maybe the timing, maybe it's just how to pull this together. Um, and then I think the rest of the responses are evenly spread between the other re results. So, um, so Peter, I think you had one more uh, slide. Yeah, thanks for answering that question. That kind of gives us a sense where everyone's head's at which is expected, um, you know, we're talking about futuristic things and, and ways to help save lives with data. But we hope that by giving away our active shooter layer through our Esri ArcGIS feature services as a layer, we'd like to give it to free to all PSAPs, big and small. Anyone on this call, just reach out to me personally at uh, peter at datacable.com for access. And, and maybe that'll give you some more insight into how it can be used and you know push you into the future of consuming these types of streams so i'll leave this up here for a minute so feel free to take a screenshot or write it down and we can open it up to questions yeah peter so um i do have a question for you and uh, i think this kind of really ties nicely to one of your slides where you're talking about the integration uh and so the, the question is what are the requirements for an organization to utilize data capable unique services? Yeah, that's a great question. And really there are no requirements. It doesn't matter what you have for existing technology. If you have existing technology, we can integrate in multiple of ways. If you don't, we can provide our solution hosted in the cloud. So you don't need to install anything on your network. From big to small, doesn't matter what your budget is, our pricing model, is pretty flexible and kind of like an a la carte menu. So you could choose one small piece, grow into it, or just go for the, the whole package right off the bat. It's really up to you. Sounds good. And I think that, you know, you know, when you look at that poll uh, question and it overwhelming it was, you know, someday have more questions, obviously they contact you, but I think it's also people just kind of getting their heads wrapped around how do they leverage um, these capabilities in what they're doing in the PSAP. So I think, that, that 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 really makes sense based on what you showed here. Um, and then they can obviously reach out to you. But I think it also is actually uh, a really nice segue to uh, our next presenter, which is Kevin Armstrong. And Kevin's gonna, uh, he's gonna show the, uh, some, some of the integration of these data feeds into your PSAP. So with that said, uh, Kevin, uh, I'm gonna hand, the, hand this off to you. All right, thank you, Brett. Um, and what I'd like to do just to start talking about how to integrate this data is I want to show you an example of um, this is an operations dashboard. So this is a out of the box Esri uh, web application uh, that comes with ArcGIS. And uh, we have this configured here uh, with live feeds from Ogden, Utah. So uh, using GIS, we've created a connection to uh, their CAD and their AVL. So you see on the map here, uh, the the blue and the the red are the units. Uh, so blue for police, red for fire. Uh, and you can see them moving along. And then uh, all the different colored um, points on here. As we zoom in a little bit, you can see are the actual CAD calls as they're coming in. Um, so the larger the dot, the more recent uh, the call is. So you can see this one's just uh, a few minutes old. Um, and so we're connecting to those different systems and then out of the box the dashboard uh, is able to summarize the data so we see you know currently the number of active calls by priority uh, so we have two priority one calls and you can click on that and it'll actually filter the map for you so we see here's the location of those two priority one calls and we see the list on the left that's updated um, and we also have the ABL information so we can see all the active units uh, and uh, depending on the unit, we can click on them and, and actually follow them. The dashboard will, you know, as the location updates, the dashboard will automatically pan and, and follow their location. So it really shows you the power of GIS to connect to data sets that you have uh, access to locally. Um, but what we'd like to do is, is show you how you can then um, connect to some of the feeds we've been talking about from data capable and from Waze. Uh, so to get access to those feeds, I want to start here in our ArcGIS Marketplace. Uh, so to connect to Waze, uh, you can sign up uh, to 
Uh, they're connected citizens programs. So if you go to ways.com forward slash CCP, uh, you can uh, connect and sign up for the connected citizens program. Uh, and when you submit that form uh, to sign up, Waze will give you credentials uh, for accessing that feed. And to access this, all I have to do is just go to the marketplace, type in a search for Waze, and you see we have the Waze Live Alerts layer uh, within the ArcGIS marketplace. So if I click on that, um, all I'll have to do, I'm already signed up, but there'll be a button here to say subscribe, uh, and you would just click on that, enter your credentials, uh, and that would give you access to this Waze Live Alerts layer. And once you are granted access, you can just hit view item, and this will show you uh, the details page for that layer, and you can then share that to your organization. Uh, so whether you use an ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise, um, I can connect, I can share this out. Uh, I've got a couple groups that I've already created in my organization that I can share this layer to. And then once those groups are created, I can then start inviting people in my organization to those groups so that they can then access this feed and use it on any of the you know, large uh, selection of web and mobile and desktop applications uh, that come with ArcGIS. Um, so I'm gonna show you now that I've, I've shared that layer uh, with my ArcGIS organization, um, I'm in here kind of behind the scenes of that dashboard, and this is the actual web map uh, that's being used in that dashboard application. Uh, and this is where I can go in and kind of configure all the layers, set up labeling, symbology, add new layers, et cetera. Uh, so once I've shared that Waze layer, all I have to do is, is go ahead through and search uh, my groups, and I can type in Waze, and here's that Waze Live Alerts layer and I can just click add that to the map, and it's automatically in there for me. So I've already done this, that layer is, is in here. Um, you can see the symbology, it comes pre-symbolized. Uh, so I can go in here and, and see, you know, click on these, see we have uh, Hinkley Drive, we have an accident that was submitted a few minutes ago. Um, and I actually have connection to the Utah DOT uh, traffic camera, so you can actually uh, click the traffic camera, you can see the accident uh, here, uh, on the traffic camera as well. So uh, we're getting live alerts from Waze. These, this data is updated every minute or two. Um, so you don't have to do anything except when you add it in, um, you can set the refresh interval on the layer so that I don't have to touch the map every, in this case, every 30 seconds, it's gonna go and look and refresh that layer for me uh, to see if there's new incidents reported. And some other things that I can do, I can configure the pop-up. Uh, so when I click on the, the actual alert or the, I can style what fields show up here and what information. In this case, I'm just showing the location and the last update and the type of incident. Uh, you can also do things like create labels. If I wanted to label um, all these alerts, in this case, I, I can pick any of the fields that are in the data itself. Uh, but in this case, I actually created a custom expression. Uh, and if you look back here, you can use what's called arcade. This is a um, comes with ArcGIS, it allows you to create custom uh, labels and symbology. In this case, I'm just doing a, a difference of the date between now and the actual update time of the Waze incident. Uh, and when I do that, you'll see it's, it, it compares the current system time of my machine with the time that that Waze incident was added, and it shows me how many minutes ago uh, that incident was put in there. So we see this says nine minutes ago, uh, and as time keeps ticking, that'll automatically update. So there's some really nice things you can do within the web map to make a nice, uh, very easy to use uh, uh, app for all of your users, whether they're GIS professionals or not. Uh, the other thing that we can do uh, in here is add in the data capable feeds. So if when you subscribe to data capable, uh, they will send you a URL uh, with credentials uh, so what I can do if I wanted to um, go back to my content, and I'll just say add item from the web, and they, they are providing you with an ArcGIS server uh, service, so I, you just paste that URL in here, and then, oh, wrong URL. Um, and then it'll ask you for your credentials, and then once you supply your credentials, you hit add item, 
and that will then be part of your organization, just like the Waze layer. So I can go back into the map and uh, go to my add content and I can search and I can search. I have a group uh, for data capable. I can just search on data here. Let me do data capable. And you can see all the different layers that we have uh, from data capable. So here's the active shooters layer. Uh, this is one, if we can open this up, we see we have two incidents in there now. Actually, one was uh, just updated today. There's an active shooter event in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Uh, so you can see that uh, in, the, uh, in the layer as well. So once you add uh, all these to your web map, you can then share this web map and you decide who within your organization you want to have access to it. And then how do you want to share it? And in this case, you can create a web application so I'm using our operations dashboard uh, template. So that's the one that I've uh, used to create this dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead into the edit view of that dashboard and you can see how it's configured here. I've got all the visualizations uh, already created, but for what I would like to do is some of that new ways data, I'd like to add that in. Uh, so I'm gonna create a visualization here uh, within Ops Dashboard, this is a list of all the different types of visualizations you can use. Uh, so I'm going to use a list widget, and I'm going to point to, this looks back at the web map and shows me all the layers that are available to me. So I'm going to use that Waze Live Alerts layer, and then I'm going to sort this layer by the date and descending, so the most recent uh, alerts show up at the top. And then I'm going to pick what fields do I want to see within this visualization. And of course I can customize this. I'm gonna do the incident type and then the subtype, hit enter. I can put, and I can just go through each of the different fields here. Uh, what's the street address? And maybe add in the date, uh, the last update. And you can format this again with your standard text formatting tools uh, that are within the dashboard. I can change the font sizes. Uh, et cetera. So there's a lot you can do here. Um, and then the last thing I want to do here is when you click on an item in the list, I want to add some actions. So what I'd like to do is zoom uh, our map to that location and show the pop-up. So when I hit done, I've created that new visualization that'll show up here in the dashboard. And then I can just go and drag it to where I want it to uh, live within this dashboard. So I'm gonna drop it over here. We have a um, sort of a account widget and a chart. So I'm gonna group it with them and put that right here up top. So now I can see here's my list of all my incidents. Now, one thing to note about this Waze layer, it's a global layer. Uh, so you can see this, these visualizations are showing all the Waze alerts for the entire, uh, entire world actually. Uh, so I want to I want to filter this so it just shows my jurisdiction. So there's a couple ways you can do that. I can set up the map within my dashboard that when this map extent changes, it can filter any one of these layers. So the the ways count, the type chart, the list that I just created. So when I pan and zoom the map, only the incidents within the map extent show up on this list. The other thing you could do is if maybe you have a custom polygon boundary like your PSAP boundary or a county boundary, you can load those into a layer and use those as a spatial filter, which I've done here. Uh, and in this one, I'm just going to configure this filter to, uh, I'm going to filter that list that I just created and I'm going to do a spatial filter. So I've already preloaded uh, some locations. So like all of Weber County, if, if I enable that filter, this just shows me the ways incidents that are reported for the entire county. So this is not just Ogden, but areas east and west that are still within the county. So very, very simple and easy to use. We can do the same thing with data capable. Uh, so in this case, I'll, I'll go ahead and we'll create another list. And I can choose what, do I, what layers from data capable do I want to use. So in this case, we're talking about active shooters. So I'm going to go ahead and add that one in. Uh, and I'll do the same thing. I'll sort it and we'll sort it by our date field so that the most recent are at the top. And then I'll choose the different types of 
uh, fields that I want to put in here. So we'll do, uh, we'll set a title. We have an active shooter event. And then I'll add, um, let's put the uh, location field. And then um, we can have uh, the date. And we'll say, you know, this is the date it was detected. And then, you know, these are also reviewed events. So I can go in here and we have a field for the date that it was reviewed as well. So I know that, yes, it was detected, but somebody, you know, a human already looked at this and confirmed that this, in fact, is a real event. Uh, and you can change colors, et cetera, on there as well. So I can make this maybe a, a green or something. Uh, and we also have a field that links out to uh, the details. Uh, so what I'm going to do is say, click for details. And then I'm going to select that and create a hyperlink. And there's a field in there that is called detail URL. And hit OK. So now when I click on this, it'll launch uh, the, um, the page for, uh, that opens up uh, data capable. Oh, it's called details URL, sorry. Let me change that. details URL and hit OK and then hit done. So I can add in this list uh, and this will show me all the active shooters. So I'll drag this over to our data capable uh, section here and we'll have this list. Oh, let me drag that up at the top and group that as a row. So now I can see all the active shooter events and I can set an action as well. So when I click on that, let's just have it, uh, we'll zoom to the event in the map and we'll show the pop-up information. So I can hit done. Now when this uh, list refreshes, I can click on this. This will zoom me over to the location. We're now over in, um, in Massachusetts, in uh, Plymouth and that event let me zoom out. Here we'll show up in just a second once my browser refreshes. And I can click for details and this will launch me out to the uh, to the incident page so you can see all the information that uh, has been collected uh, about this specific event. We see that it's verified. Uh, it's got a check mark up there so I know this is this is real information. So you can see how easy it is to begin integrating a lot of these feeds uh, into uh, your, your ArcGIS apps. Again, very simple. I'm gonna go ahead and save this dashboard so that these visualizations are now part of um, the dashboard that I've created. And again, there's a lot more we can do to configure the dashboard. I just wanted to give you a, an overview of how you can connect to this information um, how this looks within some of our Esri apps. In this case, we're looking at operations dashboard um, and uh, just show you what's out there uh, and how you can easily enable your piece apps to have these life-saving uh, and real-time feeds uh, from Waze and from Data Capable. All right, with that, I'll pass it back to uh, Francis to uh, give you more info on Waze. Kevin, thank you <clears throat> so much for bringing this all together. I think when I spoke about the Waze relationship and Pete about data capable, it's really key to kind of put this all together um, in one place, right? So uh, let's see here, I should be sharing my screen now. I wanted to move over to a couple of calls to action for the group today. So first and foremost, Kevin, thank you again for bringing this all together. Uh, you made it really compelling as far as bringing these data points together and getting us into an operations dashboard. Specifically for this event today, we put together a new landing page for our relationship with Waze. So uh, this shows integrating Waze with, with ArcGIS, road closures, <clears throat> our solution template there, how to go to the marketplace and, and get the data, and then how you go ahead and build dashboards. Uh, we also called out how to share your data locally, and Kevin went over that as well. And then also showing some data automated events with the Waze connector. So really try to, to give you a good 
home page and landing page for the work with Waze. And of course, there's always Traffic Insights at the foundation. As a call to action, you have uh, our team to reach out to, Waze at Esri.com or CCP at, at Waze.com. As Kevin showed, uh, we do have on the marketplace today our live alerts layer. This is free for partners of Waze for Cities. I mentioned earlier that Waze, uh, the Waze Connected Citizens program is now called Waze for Cities. When you click buy, that reconciles to their partner page and you simply join and apply uh, to the Waze for Cities program. And again, we're opening the aperture there because it's not just connected citizens for the traffic data, it's also for the carpool and the beacons and other things. So I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. And then I also wanted to go back to uh, really our good friends and great partner at Data Capable. Uh, you know, uh, Pete and the team there, they mentioned they won an award, but I wanted to really underscore that award because it reflects the significant effort and consideration that the team, the Data Capable team had made in integrating with our technology at Esri to create this futuristic real-time environment that can analyze and predict events that affect the safety and well-being of our community. So I think Pete and the team remain very humble as part of our community, but they are here to help. And as part of their helping, this active shooter feed uh, is going to be free to all PSAPs. And the call to action there is to contact Peter at datacapable.com for the access to that. So the team has really leaned forward there and said, hey, you know, we want to make the most of our data and our, our content for this community. So again, they're offering this active shooter data um, at no cost to you. And again, the, the, the award that these guys had won, uh, we have over 2,500 different partners at Esri. Uh, data Capable is one of 13 of those partners to receive an award uh, from Esri. And it's a really major accomplishment for their team coming out of our startup program, being a successful graduate, a graduate of that program, and now really being deep in our community. So many thanks to Peter and the team at Data Capable. And remember what Ke Kevin said, those check marks represented verification. So that is human verified. And that's another uh, excellent example of, of how uh, Peter and the team are leaned forward for our community. So uh, Pete, thanks so much for your work. and. Uh, Kevin, again, thanks for putting this all together. Uh, it's really compelling for, for this community. Uh, <clears throat> now I think we have some, a little bit of a call to action on this free ebook that we're providing, Five Ways GIS Empowers Next Gen 911. And I think we also uh, have an opportunity to address some questions, uh, comments, and concerns from our community. Uh, thanks very much. All right. Thank you, Francis. Uh, so, a couple of few things, uh, Francis, you're not off the hook, so I, I need to, to stay on the line because we, we have received a bunch of questions uh, throughout the uh, webinar, and thank you for those who did. A lot of them were kind of focused, and uh, we will follow up with those questions uh, individually uh, after this webinar, but there's a couple here that are related to ways that I wanted to throw out there. Um, so the first one, is the ways for cities and CCP data made available to Esri partners? Uh, yes, um, if you contact uh, myself, uh, F-K-E-L-L-Y at Esri.com, we have worked with our partners uh, to ensure that they can get a demo sample uh, of the data so they can not only work with the integration but showcase that integration. Uh, they can reach out to me directly on that. Uh, my email is F-K-E-L-L-Y at Esri.com and we're happy to help out there, no problem at all. Great, thanks. And this next one, it, it may be you, Francis, it may be uh, Kevin, but the question is, does the Waze incident automatically go away on the map once it is, what is it, either old or has been resolved? I think Kevin can answer that better than myself. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it will go away once it's gone from Waze. So, you know, as you're, if you've ever used Waze before, you submit, uh, an alert or traffic jam or something like that, you click on and, and submit it, but other people can give it a thumbs up, et cetera. All that, you know, as it's actively being reported, it's in the Waze system. So what we're doing is every you know, minute or two, we're polling all the active events in Waze. So the second it's not in Waze and we poll and it's not there anymore, then we're expiring those features from this service automatically. So as an incident is, is viewed and you know it's it's still within ways people are reporting it saying yes that car is still on the shoulder 
we're still showing it once you know Waze cleans it out and says okay you know somebody either says no it's not there anymore or it just times out then it will time out on our side as well so really it's a community validation system that if the incident or traffic jam is happening and other Wazers are um, supporting or validating that that is still there that's going to continue and I think that's a that's a real benefit to the community as they look out there that if Wazers are saying it's still there um, we've seen instances where um, before 311 or even 911 is considered we've seen uh, organizations roll a cruiser out uh, just based on uh, Wazers uh, connecting on that on that incident perfect thank you to both of you so uh, there was a couple of other questions that came through around Waze Hub, and we'll follow up on those afterwards, um, and I can kind of explain on that one. But uh, again, for all the other questions that weren't addressed, we will definitely follow up you uh, post-webinar uh, on those items. So a few more uh, additional items I want to cover uh, today with our few uh, final minutes here. Um, uh, I don't know if we mentioned, but today's webinar is being recorded, and the recording will be posted on the Esri industry web pages, and we'll also be sending a link to all the attendees. Um, and in addition to that, we will be sending uh, some links and information based on the information that's presented today, and I think we'll also be able to provide you some of the email contact names of the presenters, so if there's follow-up questions, you can definitely reach out to uh, any of us, to be honest. Um, so. Uh, again, that, that will be uh, all included in a post uh, email to all the presenters. Uh, I would also ask, and uh, if everybody doesn't mind to fill out the uh, survey of the webinar, we always appreciate the feedback and the comments. Uh, it always makes them for better uh, presentations in the future, and we also get your input, uh, maybe what things you'd like to hear in a future webinar. So please uh, don't hesitate to uh, fill those uh, surveys. Um, a little reminder that Esri will be at the IACP conference in Chicago uh, in about a week and a half. Um, and uh, so we'll be in booth 2815. You don't need to remember that number. There'll be plenty of maps uh, on the floor, but uh, Mike King, uh, Ray Umali, and myself will be uh, there uh, along with some of our other colleagues. Um, and I guess to mention uh, Ray Umali, I don't know if we've mentioned that before, but there's one person you have not heard on the call today, and that is Ray Umali, and he's really the organizer of this webinar. So a big thanks to Ray for pulling all the everybody together and all the presenters and making this thing uh, go off so seamlessly uh, every time we do that. So uh, I, I want to thanks again to uh, Francis and Peter and Kevin for your pre presentations. And uh, lastly, I want to thank for all of the attendees for uh, joining the webinar today. So on behalf of everybody at Esri, uh, have a great day.